Welcome back, baseball fans, to this eliminating the Philadelphia Phillies video. What you're looking at is last year's stats from 2022, the Phillies. Yeah, they had the worst record in the league a year ago. They had the first pick in the draft. It would take Mike Schmidt with it. But last year, uh, Johnny Callison overachieved with a 339 card. That was pretty nice. Orlando Cepeda would become trade bait in the offseason with a nice year, hitting 286. Uh, Lozinski's first year there is nice. He could play first or outfield as a very young bull. The bull Lozinski, 286. Some nice batting averages, really. Until you get to Boa, had an off year. And then Darren Johnson really struggled. Um, not much else there with offense. Uh, pitching wise, um, the bullpen looked great. Joe Horner, Jerry Johnson, Fred Gladding all pitched well. They had Scarce didn't, but those four would come back a year later. Really, it was Carlton had could not live up to the card. You know, the 27 win card of 72. He was four and six with it in 78 innings. I mean, if you don't get support, you're not going to get the wins, and you're going to get less support in the Carrier League when all the other teams he's facing are so much better. We like Wayne Twitchell's card as a starter, too. Um, did okay with it. Pat Dobson acquired in a trade with Baltimore. A 20-game winning Pat Dobson did nothing. Couldn't win one game. That's what happens when you take a 20-game winner and put him on a lousy team. Barry Lurch. This is the entire... They're going to bring this entire pitching, spat, uh, pitching staff back a year later and improve the offense and see what they can do. They scored 126 runs. They gave up 149. So, yeah, that's bad. And really, 11-21 could be worse, I suppose. They were fortunate enough, again, to get the first pick in the draft, and they took advantage of it by taking Mike Schmidt. But it wasn't just him. Let's take a look now at the team we just saw that lost the league championship series. 31-24. and That's 20 more wins. They are 17 games improved. Um, their offense improved about seven points. The ERA went down by about a run. It's the same eight names for pitching, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's go to the offense. Gary Maddox, the other big addition. They brought him in, took him away from the Giants with a 73 card. Something that the Giants squandered the careers of Matthews and Maddox and San Fran, letting them go to Philadelphia, and of course, Matthews went to the Braves, and he went to the Cubs and the Phillies. But anyway, Gary Maddox ended up here. He did everything you could ask. Batted first or second most of the time, could steal bases, 35 RBI, 86 hits for this team, and a 345 batting average. Somehow got snubbed for the All-Star game. The Phillies actually had three guys in the All-Star game. They had uh, Mike Schmidt. Let's look at him down there. He only hit 244, but it's Schmidt. He draws walks. A 358 on base. 12 homer. 27 RBI from the leadoff spot. 14 stolen bases. 43 runs scored. They batted him leadoff because he was an ace stealer, and they had lumber, lumbering guys like Luzinski and Darren Johnson in the normal cleanup spot. Tim McCarver did a nice job platooning with Bob Boone catching. Johnny Callison had another good year. Tony Taylor went to the All-Star game as a utility player. Hit 294 and, uh, with 67 hits. Uh, Darren Johnson, we saw how bad he was a year ago. He made up for it. The Phillies were okay, and, and then they put Darren Johnson in the cleanup spot, and he took off with the home runs. Uh, 11 of them almost caught Schmidt. 29 RBI, 250 batting average there. Uh, big timely homers. Boa with his 249 card hit 249. And then uh, Luzinski somehow disappointed. Um, maybe if Luzinski had a better year, they would have gone to the World Series. It's, 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 you know, it's tough. 235, 4 and 26 for him. But let's look at the pitching that improved so much. Steve Carlton got the Cy Young, got 10 wins, pitched 155 and two-thirds innings with an area of 301 and a Whipple 110. 12 complete games. Uh, Twitchell, 9 and 4, ERA a little bit high, but it could be a little bit high because the offense got better. Then you had Pat Dobson. He redeemed himself after a trouble 
season a year ago to go five and seven with a 297 ERA. Barry Lurch seldom pitched as a number four starter. He was okay. The bullpen is still fantastic. Uh, you have Joe Horner, the closer, two great years in a row, eight saves, 287. The other lefty, scarce or scarce, he improved. His area was six a year ago. Now it's a buck fifty. Jerry Johnson, the perfect long man. You can't ask for anything better than that. Thirteen and two thirds shutout innings with ten hits and two walks. And Fred Gladding as the righty who faces righties and slams a door against them. Let's take a look now at the Philly stack as it's been the biggest, you know, up and down we've ever seen here. Um, two years ago, they were 10 games better. So they, they dropped 10 and then went up 17. So they were in the middle of the pack. Then they were the worst team. Then they were almost the best team. Um, and it's all, you average it all out, and that makes, yeah, that's probably accurate. If you average out the Phillies two seasons, um, they are 42 and 45. And that's pretty much about right. But the mere fact that this team almost got to the World Series is somewhat shocking. Though, I think the pitching staff, which I'm sure they can't keep together, it's a shame really, uh, this pitching staff would be, would be better than the pitching staffs that made the playoffs later in the decade. And we're not going to be able to see those guys continue, a lot of them anyway. So we're going to pull out the 1971 Phillies from this and see what they do for an encore. From they've been the worst, they've been the best. And uh, is it the case next year they're in the middle? All right, so they pulled out their 871 guys. And they're going to run it back with um, eight hitters and four pitchers. All right, so they have a catcher in Boone. The first baseman is not around anymore, Darren Johnson. But for the moment, that you could just put Tony Taylor there. He's a utility player. You can stick him everywhere. Let's just assume, or actually, even better, you can put Luzinski there. Um, you have a bunch of infielders, which is good. You have uh, Taylor, Harmon, Doyle, and Schmidt, and most likely a Boa coming back. In the outfield, look, Johnny Callison's going to run it back for one more year. Maddox and Callison. So the only guy really missing from the offense at this point is Darren Johnson and Larry Boa that we, that, of note. And the pitching, Carlton will give it one more shot with that... Uh, 27 win card of 72. Just got a Cy Young and just got his team to the League Championship Series. So next year, he's got one more chance to get this card. And then after this 72, Carlton will be okay. He won't have his next best year until 1980 and 81. In between, he's going to have a couple nice years, but not nearly as dominant. And this is the Twitchell card we, we like a lot. This is a good one-two punch as the other two starters are missing. Really nice year out of Twitchell in 73. And from there on, he, he doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, but at least uh, Carlton and Twitchell, these are good enough to get you to the playoffs next year with some more support. You got a couple relievers. This guy, Scars, had a nice year as a lefty. 241 ERA. And Frey Gladding, a guy they brought in from the Astros, uh, a righty who gets righties out in relief too. So, yeah. Good stuff from Philadelphia. Now, what do they do? I mean, uh, can they theoretically get back to the league championship game as they get closer? I mean, 75 is cards are coming up. And then 76, 77, they're getting into their sweet spot here. They should be able to maybe not go to the league championship game, but they should be able to be a perennial playoff team. Let's see what they can do with their 71 players. All right, we'll take a look at these uh, 71 cards, beginning with Larry Boa. We know he's coming back. He's just getting started. Uh, he's going to have that great gold glove that's going to be very important to winning a championship for this team. Has uh, 71. He was a 1-10 shortstop. I don't know how he doesn't get a gold glove. Who in the National League got it? 
I'm, uh, I don't even remember. But uh, he gets a glove in 72. Doesn't get another gold glove, weirdly enough, in this timeline. So you want to be a one at short, you'll probably get that in 72. These two cards are available. You can get Bo as a 300 hitter and MVP votes with a 75 card that happens next year. So you've got all sorts of choices here with Boa moving forward. He's one of your keepers. Keepers again, they are worth $10,000 tokens units. And uh, they gotta keep four. Next guy, Roy Foster was acquired from the Indians to platoon in a corner outfield spot with uh, John Callison. And uh, Foster had a uh, he had some nice numbers here with the Indians. He had a nice 70 and 71. 72, only 143 at bats. This card might exist with Cleveland to give it waivers. Let's go check it out. So we're going to go to Gary's roster page, look at the 72, the original, and see if Roy Foster's Cleveland card was made. And he's not listed under Cleveland. Maybe he's an extra player. Yes, here he is, an extra player for Cleveland. So that means we can give him waivers with that card, as the Phillies should have better players to, to protect. Next up, Darren Johnson. They were almost giving up on this guy, as he had a hit below the Mendoza line a year ago. Then they tweaked their lineup around the All-Star break, and he caught fire in the second half with a ton of homers. Helped the team get to the League Championship Series, which is probably much more than Johnson saw in this time, as far as playoffs go. Let's go take a look at it from this whole era here. Yeah, he's with the Phillies all through here. He's on Oakland in 73, so he actually does get to a World Series with them in 74 as numbers aren't particularly great. Doesn't get there with the Phillies, but he's still got some life left in him. 72, um, the numbers are, aren't particularly good. 73, his total numbers, he gets MVP votes with a 240 batting average, 20 home runs. Um, this is an intriguing, an intriguing player here. He's definitely gonna be in the league. Now, there's some interesting things here. Number one, if you wanted to put him on waivers, he has to have a card in 72. With the Phillies, probably does, but let's double check. Should, you think. And he does. Okay, so he's got the card in 72. So you can get waivers on him, or you can keep him. Or you could package him in a deal, because he get, goes to Oakland in, in 73, and then he's with Milwaukee in 74. With, and then with Boston, and 75 is with the White Sox in Boston, so he's all over the place. Uh, so his career is all over the place right now. He can be kept, he can be put on waivers, he can be traded, just about everything except for retired. The guy still wants to play ball somewhere. Frankly, as a right-handed hitting first baseman, you just simply try and isolate where does he crush left-handed pitching in a platoon and maybe a good defensive first baseman. He had a good glove. And that, that's how, probably how you would use Darren Johnson. So this is what we'll do. We'll, we'll start him as a keeper. If I find there are other Phillies I like more, we'll either trade him or put him on waivers. That's how we'll handle that. All right, the last hitter here is Tim McCarver. What a strange journey Tim had here throughout the National League. A bunch of different teams. Um, of course, the Cardinals, Phillies, predominantly. 17 years old is 59. Okay, so this little thing happened. He went from Philadelphia to Montreal in 72, then to St. Louis. Then eventually he goes back to Philadelphia in 75. So a couple different stints with the Cardinals with Montreal and Boston in there. Uh, interesting journey for, for Tim. Here we are, this is the season we just had, it was a good one, 278, 730 OPS. Now in 72, between a couple teams, has got an OPS of 650. 73, 704. 74 and 75, 
Well, 74 is a bad year. 75 would be a good year if they made that card. They may not make it with just 95 plate appearances. Bob Boone is Philadelphia's catcher moving forward. But having a left-handed catcher in a platoon would be rather nice. Again, just like Darren Johnson, this is like a to be determined here. You kind of like wait and see. What do you want to do with this guy? Obviously, he can still play baseball. And in 77, he really can. This card, this 320 card exists. Actually, in 76, an 842 card. These two years aren't up yet. You have to wait a couple years before 76 and 77 are available. Same kind of weirdness here. So, to me, I'm thinking these guys are trade chips. Because they, you know, they, the right team, uh, they're luxury items right now. Um, I mean, they could put Luzinski at first, and they could have Bob Boone catch. So right now they're luxury items. You know, Luzinski at first is a right-handed hitting three. And Darren Johnson's a right-handed hitting two. That probably turns into a three. So there's not much difference between Darren Johnson at first base and Greg Luzinski moving forward. All right, let's get the pitching. So Pat Dobson's the first guy here. And the 71 season is finally over with. Um... They got him from Baltimore with that card, and they gave up the Grant Jackson. That was a lot to give up, but it was because of 70 season. But guess what, folks? This 72 card might be better. Don't let that one loss record, you led the league in losses, forget it. Baltimore could not hit a bull in the you-know-what with a shovel in 1972. They stunk up the joint. All Baltimore's pitchers had ERAs around 2.5. Dobson, 265, 107 whip, and an all-star. You could say this season was better than his 20-win season. That's a keeper. And now you got a big three pitching staff with one lefty and two righties. I'm going to put an exclamation point here. We're keeping Dobson. We made the deal for him. Might as well keep him. Now you got Carlton, Twitchell, and Dobson all doing very well. Which leads us to that fourth pitcher, Barry Lursch. And frankly, with a big three, you don't necessarily need a four. You can get that in a draft. A number four starter is seldom used in our season. Or... I wouldn't say seldom used. He's used about half as much as the top three guys are used. So Lursch's uh, 214 innings of 71 was used. Statistically, he pitches. He doesn't pitch on three days rest, but he pitches just as good for the Phillies in 72. But only eight games as a starter. Well, that's fine too. You can move into the bullpen, to give him Jerry Johnson's spot. Again, uh, this is a good. Uh, this is another keeper, and again, this is another one of those. Do you, you want to trade this guy? I'm not sure what the Phillies are going to want to do. They're going to have to think, look at who is coming up in the farm system, and you know. So this is a good thing to have. Uh, you know, bonus keepers is good. You can package them up in trades. So they like they were right now. They want to keep five out of their six guys. Which leads us to Jerry Johnson. He was the long man who did not give up a run. <laughs> so it's hard to argue with that, right, folks? Uh, he was perfect. Here he is Zip. As the long man. Was a Philly, then he went to the Cardinals and Giants. So the card we used was this, of course, 71 card, 297 array. 67 appearances, 21 decisions, 109 innings, 18 saves for the Giants. Great card for Jerry Johnson. Then after that, eh, he's starting to get kind of meh. Just sort of, uh, yeah, that was a great year. Then after that, he sticks around for six more lackluster seasons. Shame he had six Cy Young votes in 71 with the Giants. And 18 MVP. That's the card that we're giving up. And again, he wasn't really associated with Philadelphia anymore. It had been years. See that 69? So they held on to him all the way through to 71. So that that's another reason why the Phillies were so good this past season. This bullpen was fantastic. 
Does he get waivers in 73 innings with the 72 Giants? We'll look over here. The answer might right be, be right here. There it is. He's on the Giants, so he can give him waivers. So, you kind of just figured something out here. If he's gone from the bullpen, Barry Lurch can take a spot, and then you can find somebody else to start. So that's a quick fix. You go Carlton, Twitchell, Dobson, and then Lurch is now in the bullpen with Scarce, Gladding, and Horner. But next up, or at least he's in the bullpen with Scarce and Gladding, because Joe Horner is the next pitcher up for bids on the prices right here. Joe Horner had an outstanding 71. Probably never dreamed that the 71 Horner would be in so many uh, playoff games with this what, crazy Philadelphia team. If they weren't very good, he was 34 years old. Nice long career, Houston, St. Louis. And a great year, 197 ERA and a 106 whip. 72, he actually pitched well for the Phillies. They shipped him to Atlanta and he got knocked around. That probably ruined his card. 73, he spent time with the Braves and Royals. It wasn't good either. Suck around in 74, and then 75 and 76. The one problem is, in all these years, he has, doesn't even pitch 40 innings. So you never know. I mean, in these first edition sets that I use, you never know if they're going to go that low with innings pitched. Uh, if this was a reissue card set league, they'd probably make these cards. But um, not so much here. So we want to waive him or retire him. There's, you know, like I said, we he's um, we got Max Scarce as the lefty in the bullpen. So does he have a Philly or Brave card in 72? Look at the Phillies and the here's the Phillies. He's not there. I bet the Braves. There he is. He's on Atlanta. They probably, they probably, if I had to guess, they probably combined the stats to a 440 ERA for Atlanta. So let's put him on waivers. I mean, a left hand, he'll be picked up by somebody. All left-handed pitchers stick around in the league. Well, we got too many guys. So we got our five keepers. And it looks like, um, well, obviously Boa will definitely be kept. And Pat Dobson will definitely be kept. And then the other three guys are intriguing. I think Lersh, McCarver, and Darren Johnson. Yeah, this is the fun part of the uh, league. This is why, you know, we're way too early making decisions for this sort of thing. Th these decisions will continue from now all the way through next March as the teams uh, get their postseason rosters ready for the draft. But right now, they like five guys, put three guys on waivers. And when we look globally, as now we're just left of two teams playing baseball, folks, We've, we have eliminated 30 teams. And where we should have 120 kept and 60 waived and retired, we have 128 kept and four wavered. So that's plus eight keepers, plus four waivers. So we're 12 under par for retired players, which is fantastic news. What does that mean? It means that I gotta retire 12 guys so I can take the worst wavered players, of which we've seen a bunch, and just slide them over into retirement. And then the eight weakest keepers are going to find out that they're going to have to be put on waivers. For instance, the Phillies might have to put Tim McCarver or Darren Johnson on waivers because the league is plus eight with two teams left. That's it today. Thanks for checking out this Eliminating the Philadelphia Phillies video, and we'll see you next time.